Okay, well, that gives our main rock in. We'll do some more work on that uh, shortly. But what we wanna do now is get in the sandy areas here, okay? Which is pretty straightforward. We're gonna block it in um, as a big area. First of all though, my uh, palette's starting to get a bit of a mess here. So I'm just gonna give that a bit of a clean up and I'll put all my excess paint over in one spot. Okay, which if we need some more darks, we'll have them there. And we'll clean up some of this as well. And I think I'll take a paper towel and just give everything a bit of a clean up. It's important to uh, just keep everything that you're working on quite clean. So let me just do that for a moment. Okay. So now we're going to start on that sand area, which is primarily, you know, it's yellow ochre. And uh, we'll pick up some titanium white as well. Mix those two together. And that's going to form the basis of most of our uh, sandy area there. Probably need a little bit more. And to get this to flow on right, because you can see the paint's quite thick there. To get it to flow right, I'll just uh, obviously use our flow right medium just to loosen it up a bit. And as the name suggests, it will flow a bit better. Flow right. Now this might be just a touch dark, but let's just try it anyway. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, I'm going to avoid just getting into that area f for a moment. We'll come back to that soon. The reason why I'm avoiding it is because if I pick up any of that excess paint there, it's going to muddy up the colour I've got on the brush. So I'll do that last. Good tip for you. Need a bit more flow right medium. The flow right medium really helps this style of uh, wet on wet painting. So if you're having trouble getting the paint to get on, you know, onto the canvas easily and blending and so on, then the flow right medium is the uh, could be the solution that you're looking for. Okay. Now I can come back up into this section here, up near the rocks. Quite happy to drag that dark further down into the sand here. Like so. Very good. Okay. Now I'm reasonably happy with that. It's probably just a little bit dark in places. So I'm going to take a bit more of the titanium white. And um, I'm just popping it next to our sand color. Just a little bit more of the flow right medium. And I'm just going to in a few places just lighten it off a bit. Probably, you know, through this main central part of the painting. Um, just to lighten it all up a bit. Okay. I'm not going to blend that in too much. I think a bit of color variety in the sand um, is always good. So we don't need to blend that in too much. But I think also a couple of darks as well might do the trick. Might take my little brush here. And uh, we've got some darks from before. So what I'm doing here... Oh, you know, those red leftover paints that we mixed up before for the rocks, I'm just picking up a few of those, you know, just randomly. And I pop in a few marks and lines because, you know, you get seaweed and all sorts of things happening on the beach. Just pop a few things in, especially towards the corners here. And maybe we get a bit of burnt sienna as well um, into some spots. Oops, that was a big one. Not to worry. Bit of burnt sienna. Okay. Like so. So the reason why I'm doing this, we don't just want one big flat colour, you know, one big area of colour. We want a bit of variety in the in in the colour just to make it a bit more interesting. And um, by doing popping in some colours like I've just done, cleaning off the big brush. Now, because I'm getting down towards the bottom here, I'm going to have to lift this canvas up. But what I'm going to do is just soften that off a little bit. I'll just add some interesting textures and things. If you go down and look at the beach, the sand, it's never one flat colour, is it? So, a bit of crisscross, a bit of mix up there. And stand back and have a good look at... I think we're making pretty good progress, really. Um, things are starting to come together here. So, 